I'd like to, uh, we'll, we'll open it up to uh, other crime topics in one, one minute, but I'm going to start today, and I have Chief Mike Kemper here from Brooklyn North Detectives, who oversees literally all the detectives in, in Brooklyn North, including gang, narcotics, individual squads, homicides, etc. squads, to talk about a particular case. And I think it, it uh, is worth talking about for a number of reasons. We're going to play a video, and I'm going to turn it over to Mike to narrate in a second. But what you are about to see, let me be frank, is graphic. Uh, I saw this this week. This is about a murder that took place in Brooklyn last week. And you are literally going to see a 21-year-old male fighting for his life, running on the streets of Brooklyn, being chased by a group of at least 10 thugs. It's, it's tough to watch. Mike is going to walk you through and make a plea uh, for the public's help here to make sure that anyone responsible for any role in this attack is brought to justice. Mike? Good afternoon. I don't know if the video is going to play now, but what you're watching right now is a video uh, of an incident that took place last Tuesday, March 19th, uh, in the confines of the 75th Precinct on New Lots Avenue. This incident occurs about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, where we have a 21-year-old male <clears throat> who's walking, he's walking down New Lots Avenue by himself uh, when he hits the intersection of Cleveland Street, and he he's engages a group of uh, ten individuals, ten males standing on a corner. Totally unprovoked, uh, our victim, uh, the 21-year-old, is punched in his face. Subsequent to being punched, he runs and the group chases him. And he's literally running from the group, uh, trying to escape further assault. Part of the group is chasing him on foot, and part of the group is ch chasing him in a car. The victim is literally running up and down blocks, trying to escape these uh, these individuals. At one point, one of the individuals in the group takes a firearm out and points it at close range to our victim. Uh, we don't believe any shots, <clears throat> any shots were fired at that time, uh, but the victim now is literally running for his life. The victim finds a parked car on the side of a house on Cleveland Street, and he hides behind that parked car. And he's literally hiding uh, in fear for his life as the group is now searching for him. Literally, we have video surveillance of this group looking in alleyways, walking up and down the street, hunting, searching for this 21-year-old kid. Ultimately, one individual or two individuals spot our victim hiding behind a car, and they start chasing him again. The victim now runs to the rear of a private residence and with the group chasing him. He sees a six-foot, approximately six-foot PVC fence. Our victim tries jumping over it. <clears throat> and unbeknownst to our victim, on the other side of that PVC fence is a chain fence with barbed wire on top. The victim gets stuck in a barbed wire. This group approaches the fence. One individual throws a rock at him. And another individual shoots our victim five times, causing his death. The group then runs out of the backyard and flees. Like the chief said, no less than 10 individuals were active participants in this brutal, brutal murder. And again, this video is very, very hard to watch. And, and I've been doing this a long time. Out of the 10 individuals, we've had success in identifying four. Of the four individuals we identified, we identified the shooter who was wanted, who was not in custody, and we identified the individual that threw the boulder at our victim. He has been identified. He is presently in custody, and he is being charged with murder. I'm pleading to the community. I'm pleading to anyone. If anyone has any information in relation to this case, this incident, please call 1-800-577-TIPS. That's whether you have information to what led up to this incident or the individuals involved. We're still looking to identify, and we will not rest until we identify, the six individuals that were part of this group that are unidentified. Thank you. Take questions on this particular incident to start. 
the victim is. Can you can you, can you put that in the loop again? And, and I understand it's tough to see, and it's been narrated down. Um, probably doesn't do it justice if you have to sit and watch. Uh, again, members of uh, Brooklyn North Homicide under Mike's leadership have done a tremendous job in this case thus far, going out and recovering and literally tracking blocks. This whole incident takes place uh, over a number of blocks, Rocco, where you'll see the individual running and hiding, attempting to hide for his life. Um, at several points in this, that's him hiding behind the car there. That's the victim. This is the group chasing him down the block. He's able to double back and run back this way where he runs a few more blocks. He tries to get into cabs on the street, literally anything to get away. Ultimately, he's, he's cornered like an animal in the back of a private residence where he shot multiple times. So again, 1-800, I think New York City knows the drill, what to do. This is eerily similar to last June in the 48th Precinct in the Bronx when Lissandro Guzman was the victim of a mob chasing him through the streets of the Bronx. Uh, overtones that are similar, this is a gun, not a machete or a knife, but you have gang involvement and literally hoodlums with no fear of the law uh, organized, driving around in cars looking for this individual. Uh, and chasing him down and killing him. So again, 1-800-577-TIPS. Whether we have the individual in custody, here's six that we look to identify on my left. Whether it's these six or the ones that we already know of, anyone that knows anything about that incident, please, no detail is too small, uh, call Crime Stoppers. Yes, sir. No. We have, as you see it, you'll see an individual picks up a boulder, literally, that is about this big and throws it over the fence at the individual, while a second individual, I'll slow it down and narrate it, goes up to the white fence, kind of hangs over the fence and shoots over the fence and kills the victim. We'll, we'll, we will give through DCPI, uh, the victim's name was released last week because it took place last Tuesday is my uh, belief on the date. Uh, and in terms of the overall motive, we have clear gang affiliation with the group of 10. It's still early in the investigation. That's to be determined. You know, I, I, I'm torn right now. Uh, I don't want to give any notoriety to this group. Um, I won't say what I'd like to see happen to this group. Um, this, this was difficult to watch uh, for a lot of different reasons, and you find yourself hoping, and you know what the outcome is going to be, but as the investigation unfolds and we're looking back, knowing that the person was shot multiple times and succumbed to his injuries, you're watching this video and hoping that he gets away. And uh, unfortunately, we know that wasn't the case. Tom. As far as their association, that's something we're looking into right now. Here's what we do know. We know our victim was walking down the street. And we know this because we have, we have this caption on video. There was no prior altercation, at least imminently at that time. He was walking down the block, he passes this group, and as he passes this group, he's immediately assaulted. He's punched in the face. Jump out of the car. Uh, yeah, people jumping out of the car, they surround him, and like we described, he is literally running for his life. You, you watch the video, you, it, it's, again, it's hard to watch. You're literally rooting for him, uh, and you're hoping uh, that the group gives up. They were searching for him as he was hiding behind that car for... Uh, for a couple of minutes, to be quite frank. Uh, and they, they, uh, they kept searching. The group split up. Uh, they were looking up and down a block for him. And like we mentioned, unfortunately, uh, he was discovered, and he was chased, uh, and he was murdered. Again, that, that's part of the investigation. Uh, the investigation is going very quick. And, and again, that's why we urge anyone, uh, anyone in the community that has any uh, information in relation to what transpired here or the identities of anyone uh, involved, 
Uh, we urge you to uh, please call the Crime Stoppers hotline. Uh, simply put, acts like this cannot and should not occur in New York City in 2019. Let me just, just let me elaborate on that a second. And, uh, you know, Mike's had a long day and probably a long couple of weeks. He was, he was here at CompStat this morning where we had Brooklyn North in as a borough. And, and Brooklyn um, is bucking the trend in, in New York City. They, Brooklyn as a borough was up in shootings last year. I think we've reported that before, starting really the second half of the last year. And they're driving the increase in shooting violence in New York City this year. Um, and, and what's behind the shooting violence? You ask what's behind this, you know, gang violence in Brooklyn is something that we've talked about uh, many times. I'll get back. Yep. Uh, one has been charged already. We, we, we believe we know the identity of a number of the others, and there is approximately six that we're looking uh, for help identifying at this point in time. I would like to see them all charged. We will, that will be on us working together with our partners in the Brooklyn DA's office to build a prosecutable case. But clearly when you look at that video um, as, as one sole piece of the evidence, we have a lot of work to do. But you see a group uh, working together trying to hunt down, eventually hunting them down and killing them in a backyard. Uh, I won't go into specifics. Mike could go into it, but he probably won't give it to you either. Extensive criminal histories on the group that we're looking at. Um, certainly uh, prior incidents of either gun possession, um, guns uh, being at the scene of shots being fired, uh, shootings. It's the recipe that we keep talking about. What you see on the video is an individual, our victim, walking down the street. You see a car pull up. You see three people pull, jump out of a car. It appears that the driver at that point in time does not, so that would be at least four in that particular car. And they begin, uh, after striking the victim, they begin chasing him, and the, the chase is on. Um, at that point, at this point in time, that's the beginning. Whether there was something prior to that uh, is under investigation. But from that point, we have been able to, through video, through extensive uh, tracking down of video, follow this individual literally for blocks as he continues to try to hide from this group. They catch up to him at points in time where he's able to break free. Um, you see them coordinating, talking, speak, one speaking on the phone. Eventually, he tries to hide in the rear of a private residence uh, and is successful as they're searching both sides of the block looking under cars. Eventually, unfortunately, they see him and they catch up to him as he tries to jump over a fence. Yeah. Where is it? They get the video. Go what screen do you want to put it on? Okay. You want to do it? You want to do it? It's all you. Yeah, good. That group got out of a vehicle. Right, what you're going to see right now is you're going to see the group. That's him hiding, That's the victim. Right there. And you're going to see him run a little, turn around, and come back. As he comes back, watch closely. You've got a gun pointed at him. On the sidewalk. That's right there. The seat, right, stop right now. Boom. That's our shooter. You see the gun pointed at him over here? That is our not victims. where the... Our victim is Eventual right. shooting takes place, though. This is during the, during the chase. This is even before he hides behind the car. The gun is pointed at him. We don't believe any shot is fired at this time. You're going to see the victim run. Almost the shooter is a little confused, you're going to see. And then you're going to see the, the victim hiding. About a block and a half, 
approximately after this is the location we eventually hear. Go ahead. All right, what you see is the victim now. He's got a little distance between the group, and this is a private residence, and he's literally looking for cover. He's looking for a place to hide. He finds behind right behind that car. But what the video uh, doesn't capture, we, you know, we had to edit it for you. Uh, he is hiding behind that car for quite some time, minutes. And uh, we have so many sources of video that he has, he's hiding, the group is captured on video, literally searching for him. And he's hiding behind a car. What you see right now is once they see him, he realizes, and now the chase is on again. But he's cornered. Yeah, yeah and, and he runs, you see, they chase him into the yard. Our victim is gonna run to the fence. You're gonna see the uh, people in the fence. All right, stop right, see that guy? All right. The guy with the uh, blue and red? He was a rough throw. All right, so there's our victim. victim trying to hop the fence. Again, on the opposite side of that fence is barbed wire, maybe a few inches down. Now, you see the boulder, and then the shooter. Shooter is hanging on the fence right now. And you see he's shooting straight down. <coughs> That's correct. How, I'm sorry? Well, it was the yard behind them. As far as why they have barbed wire, I can't answer that. I can tell you this. Behind that PVC fence is a chain link fence, lower, maybe a foot lower, approximately. And and topped on that uh, chain link fence is barbed wire. Yes. Yeah, so it, it is a private residence as far as uh, his familiarity. We don't think, we just think it was um, a safe place for him at the time, but certainly as this case moves forward, we're going to see if there is some, any sort of connection between the victim, person, and the house. As of right now, we don't believe so. Just as this is going on from this point to eventually where it ends, he is trying anything to get it away. Um, he's trying to get into cars, into uh, cabs, um, and unfortunately doesn't succeed.